welcome to Build. I'm Sam Thompson, and as always, we are live from London. Today, I'm joined by a chef turned model, turned chef again, who cooks up a storm on the catwalk and in the kitchen, but still doesn't look like he's touched a carb in his life. Please welcome Isaac Carew. Oh, I told you, told you he was good looking. Wow. Mm, you, you're not bad yourself. What are you wearing there? That's the kind of street style that I just can't wear. Do you know what? I can't even remember the name of these ones, but they're pretty fresh, in not they? And I love your watch. Thank you very much. Oh, mate, you're looking good. Cheers, Look, uh, before we get started, mate, just a couple of social stuff. If you would like to ask Isaac a question, please tweet us at Build Series LDN or comment below if you're watching live on Facebook. Isaac. Go for it. My man. What's up? Look, we're here to talk <laughs> about your new book, obviously, The Dirty Dishes, but... I want to start from the beginning, okay? All right, go for it. How far we're are we talking? talking? Early days, man. Okay. Like, where did you first... Do you remember the first thing you made, like, ever? Um, I've actually said this a couple, couple times. I think it was the first thing I made was like, this kind of, like, pepper, kind of olive oil toast for my mum. And it was, it was probably awful. And then there was also this kind of caramel thing. Wasn't very good. But the first banging thing I made was uh, pork chops, oh. cream, and then these kind of like cinnamon apples. How old were you? <sighs> Maybe like eight, nine years old. What? That is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate. I was making boiled eggs and soldiers and... Gun Are you any good at cooking? No, man, I'm awful. I like to say really? I'm good, but... Couple my... dishes in there? R prawns pill pill is always my go-to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is super easy. Garlic, olive oil, and a couple of prawns, obviously. And yeah, I like yeah. to make... Uh, rack of lamb's quite nice. Okay. Oh, it's on my With... agenda. Uh, well, with oh god, I'm on the oh wow. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you're on the hot seat. I'm just doing so bars, mate, and, and maybe a bit of kale, mm. panicking. Keep it healthy. And some roasted vegetables. Okay, but this isn't about me, man. This is about all you. Right, cool. All right. Let's when did for you it. first realise that you want to take a hobby and turn it into a profession? <sighs> um, I don't know. Kind of, I've always had that thought of I've always wanted to be a chef. I always kind of wanted my own restaurant. Um, and it was always kind of ingrained into my life, like my dad and my godfather are both chefs, so I was always in kitchens from a young age. Um, I was a bit naughty at school, you know, so kind of just went, I think, I just knew what I wanted to do already, so then at 16, left school, trained for two years, left there, and then started working in kitchens. See, you, you know, we're gonna get there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. did you start with your mum? Who was the one who you literally were like, because I bake cookies with my mum once, and I was like, oh, this could be quite fun. Who was, like, the driving force behind you being like, oh, wow, okay, this will I would, I would say my dad. Obviously, my mum's an amazing cook. A lot of vegetarian food when I was growing up. And then my dad, because he was working in professional kitchens, that's what I got sore, and that's what I kind of fell in love with. And then from the age of 14, I hung out with my godfather a lot, and obviously he was in kitchens as well. So I would say they're the top three people. You were made for it, basically. But this is the Cheers, thing. Mate. Most people at the tender age of 16, if you want to be a chef, you start in some, like, I don't know, like a burger kitchen or something like that. No, no, not you. Michelin star, <laughs> I do believe, at the age of 16. You That's know, a round of applause, by the way, guys, because that is young. There was a couple more. I used to work in uh, uh, greengrocers, a butchers. Um, where else have I worked? A couple gastro pubs. So there's been a lot in between. I've always had a good work ethic. How did you hit the Michelin star, though? Uh, so that was actually kind of a mistake. So I was working in a gastro pub in North London, working there for a bit, and they were like, you should do Mission Star. I was like, nah, not, not yet. I'm not ready. I've just come out of college. So they actually, without me knowing, applied to Gordon Ramsay Holdings and got the application through, and then told me I had an interview in like a week's time. Went for the interview, got the job. What was that like? Was Obviously, Gordon there? I, no, he wasn't. It was like the HR, but I was, I was nervous as anything, you know? But I, have you the, met him? Yeah, yeah, I've met him a couple of times. What's yeah. it like? I'm actually going to meet him tonight. I'm going what? to dinner. I'm not. A, I'm going to say not dinner with him, but I'm going to a dinner hosted by him. So, what what did Gordon first say to you when you started? Was there like? Am a I allowed word? to swear on it? Yeah, go All for right, it. Cool. Uh, so the first thing I was making a risotto, and the head chef was like, "Come over. This guy's made like a, he makes banging risottos. He comes over, and we, as a chef, we always keep a spoon in our back pocket. Why? To taste everything. I love that. So literally, I pull. Do you out have one now? No, I don't. Not okay. me. Sorry, mate. <laughs> I'll get. We should get one. One. Uh, one made. It's like little engraved ones. We should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, Isaac. I pull this spoon out. Go to give him a taste, and he's literally like, "What are you doing? Like, are you not going to wash the spoon?" And then he calls me a dirty bastard. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. You know, like a Scottish accent. And then he goes to me. 
Um, you shouldn't have been a chef. You sh you're too lanky to be a chef. You should oh. have been a basketball player. And I, obviously, I was like 16, 17. I was just like, yes, chef. Sorry, chef. Is Wash he actually having a go at you right now? Or is he kind of joking? The TV crew, so it's kind of like semi... Send me having to go, but you know, kind of having a laugh yeah. at the same time, not actually bollocking me. So, but and, and the kitchens, I've always wanted to know this. Why do they get so rowdy in the way? You, you would think like bankers, someone who are like winning and lo making and losing like hundreds of millions of pounds, they're not as stressed as chefs. Yeah. What is it? I think we're just passionate people. Like you, you're striving for perfection. You want every dish to be exactly like your last, and just be, you know, bang on, flavorful, incredible. Yeah, you just, you just, I think that's a stressful environment. And also you're working for like 18 hour days oh. on your feet all day in God knows what temperature, sweating, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard life. But if you love it enough, mm. you know, it's cool. And is there ever a bit of beef between like the front of house and, the, and like always, the chefs? Always, mate, every single, every single restaurant, always beef. It's like two yeah. teams. And, and between chefs, you know, at the, at the same time, you're, you want a promotion, you want to be better than, you know, chef A and B. So there's always going to be a, be a bit of a rivalry. Yeah, it is. There's like, it's so funny how there's two rival teams. And I bet afterwards you go out and like have a dance-off outside <laughs> or something. I don't think we've quite had a dance-off, but yeah. <laughs> and mate, but the thing is, cooking <laughs> isn't just your thing, though. Do you know what I mean? You also got scouted for modelling, which I can, I can see why. Mm -hmm. You're incredibly good looking. How Thank did that you. come about? Um, From the kitchens to the catwalk. So I was working in... So by this point, I was about 22. There it is. I just came... Oh, there's me. There's my old mug. Um, I just came back from Miami. So I was about 22 years old. I was walking down the street outside, Selfridges. Never thought of modelling in my life. And this little... Old, not old, actually. She was actually quite young. Sorry. Uh, this uh, young woman came running up to me. and was like, excuse me, are you a model? And I just looked at her and been like, no. And I would have lied. Yes, <laughs> obviously. Because obviously outside Topshop, you get those kind of scammers. And I just thought she was one of those. Okay. And uh, she gave me a card. Didn't think anything of it for a couple of weeks. Asked my sister who'd done a bit of modeling in the past. Are they legitimate? Are they a real thing? She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, give it a try. Go in. Went in. Signed contracts. It's like 10. On the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, 10. And then I, I was still chefing a little bit and trying to fit the modeling in. And the first three months was quite slow, not much happening, and then I got a few big campaigns. Ah, oh, but see, this is where we, we tail off, because we're talking <laughs> yeah. Valentino and Hermes. Mm -hmm. well, how did that come about? Just, I don't know, just blagging it, really. And at that point, were you like, okay, I'm gonna go for the, the catwalk over the kitchen, or did you always know you wanted to go back? Um, I always thought, I thought I was gonna model for maybe one or two years, and then go back into cooking. I've been modeling for now 10, 11 years, so it's kind of, you know, taken quite a longer path. But I stopped. There wasn't enough time for me to cook and travel and be a model, so I just stuck with modeling for a while. And, like, eating patterns, because I'm guessing you have to, like, s remain in good shape and stuff, but your whole ethos is just, you know, like, the dirty dishes, like, you know, make a nice pasta and stuff. Exactly. How did that go down? Um... I think there's a lot of myths in or what the perception of the modeling world is. Like, I think for girls, it's a lot harder. And for guys, in, like, say you want to be a men's health cover star, obviously you're going to have to be a bit... I have had the Asian get in touch a couple of times. <laughs> we haven't had a reply quite yet. You'll get, you'll get one, don't worry, Let's mate. Fly. Um, you know, for them, they have to be a bit more strict. But for the average model and also, also the average person, like, you, can't, you don't need to restrict your diet. You can have loads of fun with food. And you just don't, you know, just have fun. Don't be boring. Obviously, exercise here and there, but I've never been someone to, like, mm. cane it. And, like, before a shoot, you don't have to sort of watch what you eat. You just do what you want. No. Not, well, not me personally. So. Yeah, play. Yeah. And just, like, one last question about this kind of thing. Would you ever get into acting? No, definitely not. Not something for me. Because, Matt, I'm going to be honest. If there was an Elvis sort of, like, a young Elvis film, yeah, yeah, actually, you would get the part. I actually did Elvis's uh, Greatest Hits album cover with ranking they basically morph pictures of me and elvis together but unluckily sony didn't get the correct rights from the house of elvis in time and it never got published and it's cool because they're f they're really good pictures so it's, it's quite sad that they didn't, they didn't come out it's a shame we don't have some of that that'd be cool mm. but anyway on to your book the dirty dishes yes right? uh who are you trying to inspire mostly from this book um everyone cooks that aren't that handy in the kitchen like i've tried to make everything accessible and quite easy to follow and delicious so kind of you know there's a few recipes that cooks that are really good in the kitchen will love and have have fun doing but it's just trying to have a 
you know, get people who aren't cooking, get them into the kitchen. There's a massive pasta section of about 20 recipes. So I'm trying to get people to make fresh made pasta at home because it's really not that hard. So yeah, everyone really. Is this maybe like even a counter reaction sort of, because every cookbook is now like Don't. quinoa. Kale. Did you clean this, healthy yeah, that, it's and it's just so saturated and boring, and it's just, I just want everyone to have fun and not get down by thinking, oh, I can only have a salad today because I had a burger yesterday. Like, as long as your diet is varied, you're going to be way happier. You not you don't have to restrict yourself. The more you restrict yourself, the more unhappy you're going to be. And what do you say to people who claim they can't cook so they don't even try? <laughs> There are some people that literally burn every slice of toast for baked beans. So yeah, I mean, I'm that guy. I put too much pepper in my baked beans. Like, <laughs> even the baked beans don't taste nice. Yeah. Well, my recipe. I've tried to make my recipes super, honestly, super easy to follow. So I'm sure you could crack some. Come up. on. But you also include vegan recipes, don't mm -hmm. you? And now look, one of the Many reasons me and my ex-girlfriend broke up. Yeah, okay, it wasn't the cheating. Yeah. It, was, it was definitely the veganism. <laughs> Mate, you can't say that. And, uh, and from her part. And um, would, would we, we may have stayed together if we had, you know, your recipes in there. Okay. What, she vegan? She is a vegan, okay. yes. And like, what, what's Fully in there that well. I could eat? No, I'm not a vegan. That's okay. the point. I like my meat. So what yeah, could yeah. I eat from your vegan recipes? Everything. It's, they're all, like, there's an uh, amazing mushroom nut roast that I love. Ooh. Um, what is a nut roast? So obviously in America, this nut roast, I wouldn't recommend it. It's kind of nut seeds all ground up in a blender. And it's just a bit, looks like a stodgy kind of steak. It's not that great. Okay. Whereas in my book, I've deconstructed it. So it's got nice fresh mushrooms, uh, vegan butter, load of fresh herbs. And it just, it, it looks gorgeous. You can have a look later, guys, if you want to have a look. What's your favorite recipe if you had to pick one? Oh, mate, one. Yeah. Okay, oh, you, yeah, you can have like, two. You can have two. All right, I would say this is mate. This is my tricky. All right, I'm gonna give you one dessert. My sticky toffee pudding. I love sticky. You can't toffee. go like Sunday is not complete without a sticky toffee pudding. Okay, fair. Oh, that's actually uh, my blueberry pancakes, but oh. close, close. And then I would say my prawn burgers with a lime mayo. Oh. Just because it's different, you know, it's not your standard burger. I Go keep on. looking Oi. at it. Is that it there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it looks delicious. I think they're my, my top two. Oh, fair yeah. play. I quite like Again, that. super easy to make and tastes delicious. Okay. And yeah. what, what's, like, the longest dish uh, to make in that book? Um, I've got about, I think, six or seven risottos. Because we don't have long in this life anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. always so busy all the time. But, ever, but people say that. And then people scroll on Instagram for like an hour when That's they get home. That's a good point. You know, just forget your phone on the side just for... Just, oh, Instagram live just on right 40, now. Just for, sorry, guys. <laughs> just for 40 minutes, you know, make a result. I think it takes like 35 to 40 minutes. Um, what else have I got? I've got... So, um, there's a couple curries and stews. I don't think there's anything apart from a couple baking items that take more than an hour. Oh, fair. So obviously, like, for a couple desserts, cakes, you can bake, bake, do them on a Sunday when you've got more time. But and uh, jumping to Instagram, seeing mm -hmm. as yours is popping. Cheers, right? thanks, mate. Do you feel almost a little bit of pressure in this day and age that you kind of have to? Because Instagram's such a big platform now for yeah. any sort of vocation. Do you feel like you have to make it look amazing? Yeah, I think I've got, hopefully everyone thinks so as well, I've got a good aesthetic and a good eye for kind of what I know what I want at the end of the day. I also, at the start of kind of working on my Instagram, well, obviously when the start it was just Instagram, you know, nights out and whatever. And then obviously it Mine turned still are. <laughs> it turned more brandy and that and I kind of really, you know, I I really gave gave a shit basically. Mm -hmm. And I still give a shit, but at the same time I'm more like I would kind of post, make sure I post at six PM or make sure I post at, you know, nine in the morning to get those likes. Now I think my content's good enough. I don't really care if I don't get the likes because I'm happy with like what it. I've made and yeah. So Okay, so for example, how long does an image like that take to sort of construct? Um, this, well, this, well, this is one from my book. So the whole book shoot, I think it took three, four days. So this shot probably maybe like an hour to shoot this. Perfect. Yeah. Can you eat it afterwards? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. Delicious. I would Come on, you're not just going to chuck food away. You've got you to eat everything. I don't know, That's man. the best part, especially working on the book. Like everyone who's, like the whole team that works in it, you get to sit down. And eat, eat all the food that you made, so. I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Uh, <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, is there a food that you hate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? Have a guess. Oh, 
Uh, oh, uh, uh, mushrooms. I'll give you a clue. It begins with D. Uh, it's, uh, it's also a herb. Uh, <laughs> dill. Dill. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, yes. Not, I can't stand it. It's absolutely disgusting. It's it. You can put it in a dish, and I won't be able to what eat the dish. What is it? Well, I texture or smell? No, it's just the, the taste. I can't even put my, my finger on it, what the taste is or what what it is. I just, I can't stand it. It's kind of like people who hate coriander. I it hate tastes coriander. Like soap. It tastes like soap. But why is that? Why do some people hate coriander and some it's people a, don't? It's a chemical reaction in your body. I actually took, I was in hospital a couple of years ago and I had antibiotics. And for two days, I, I tried coriander and it tasted like soap. So you're my, something in my body changed and then I went back to normal and I've, now I love coriander again. But it's just something to do with how you're made at the end of the day, and that's why some people don't like it. Well, I need I think to it's quite a high percentage as well in the public. I didn't know that when I was younger. Mum was like, eat your coriander. It's like, mum, I can't. My body won't allow me to, all right? <laughs> Come on. Now, look, let's get... <laughs> you're, as I said, unbelievably good looking, mate. But being a chef as well, you're the perfect specimen of bloke. Girl, hey, ladies, on, isn't he the perfect? <laughs> exactly. So, hey, you're like, making me blush over Look, here. obviously you're going out with Dooleepa, yeah? Did yeah. you, on the first few dates, you like, I, I've got to do something food orientated? I think that part of... Oh, there we are. I knew there was going to be a bit... Oh. <laughs> um, obviously, food just comes naturally, and I love being in the kitchen. So... It's kind of, it's almost not a second thought for me to, you know, cook dinner at home or cook dinner on date night. So, yeah, just of course, yeah, it was one of the first things. And but actually, she actually cooked me the first. I was meal just we about had. to ask, is she any good in the kitchen? Yeah, she's banging in the kitchen. What's her signature dish? Um, oh, well, the first dish she made me was this like gorgeous roasted salmon. You don't uh, have to roast... lie, man. She's not. No, good. I'm being serious. Cool. She was actually, I was actually taken aback at how good she was. And now we have like an amazing love. I think that's another part of our relationship that really like brings us together is our love for food. Like we just, you know, we're just eating and talking about food, going out to like lovely restaurants, eating at home. So I think if we didn't have that food element, uh, well, do you know what? I'm going to stop now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. <laughs> I see what you're saying, man. How, like, how do you juggle like, your modeling chef, she's obviously one of the biggest pop stars in the world. How do you juggle that? A um, lot of hard work. Yeah. Uh, a lot of organizing of calendars. Yeah, yeah, but how's your 16th looking like, oh, slammed? What about like, your 18th? Honestly, and I'm awful. Like, I'm very last minute. I'm like, oh, what are you doing on 16th? Oh, I'm not too sure. I'll tell you two days beforehand. And she's literally knows what she's doing on ABC date, what time, what I'm like a month in advance. So that is a bit hard sometimes, but you know, we make it work as everyone does. And look, I mean, as I said, you're so busy. Yeah. yeah. And I know some foods don't take very long as dirty dishes mm -hmm. will tell you, but do you ever just think, ah, oh, I sod it, I'm gonna get a delivery. Uh, on days that I've done quite a few recipe tests, like for either a company or my, my book, um, Obviously, you're, you're not eating every single dish you make. You're obviously tasting everything. And it gets to the end of the day, say, like, 5 o'clock. You sit on the sofa. You're, like, you're dead. You're, you've been working all day. And then I might order something. What's your go-to? Uh, oh, what's my go-to? Mine's a cousin. A what? Really? Curry, yeah. I have a Nando's, and there's also this... Yes, boy! What's your favorite Nando's? Uh, I go for the, the Fino Pitta. Okay. With pineapple, halloumi, and chili jam. And then sides, I get... Uh, you get the boomy sticks? No, I just get the slices. Oh, really? Get the sticks the and they're yeah, banging. Yeah. Are they good? Yeah, they're so uh, good. Give me, what spice do you get your chicken? I'm medium. <laughs> what are you? Are you hot? Well, I'm actually oh. lemon and herb. I was trying, trying to spice no, up a little you're bit. you're lemon and herb. Do you know why? To neutralise the taste. Because then I put the hot sauces on the side, you see. It depends on what I'm going for. Like, if in the pitta, I'm going for extra hot. What? Are you because you've got the you are. You're a model. No, because you've got the halloumi and, like, things that take the, the spice down. <laughs> where if, if I'm getting just, like, the chicken, like, butterfly chicken or something, then I'm probably going for just the hot. Do you know what, man? Mate, lemon... Uh, do you know I what? wish you know I hadn't told you that, dude. I thought we were going to be mates. You know, on that Nando's chat, I'm going to say that's all we got time for, which sucks. Right. That's gone very, very, very quick. Uh, but his cookbook, The Dirty Dishes, is out now. Go and get it from Amazon and any good bookshop and prepare to cook up a storm. We are back tomorrow with some of the cast of new Channel 4 show, Naked Beach. But for now, give it up one last time for Isaac Carew. Amazing. Cheers. <laughs>